What's happening? Brian Tong here with everything good and bad inside the world of Apple. And yes, I'm still licking my wounds after the NBA Finals. But we're here for the Apple Bite, and the top story might bring tears to your eyes. According to the Wall Street Journal, Apple is unlikely to make major changes to the next iPhone and instead will plan bigger changes for the 10th anniversary iPhone in 2017. The new iPhones will maintain the 4.7 and 5.5 inch screen sizes, but the change this year will indeed be the removal of the headphone jack that will make the phone thinner and improve its water resistance, according to their sources. Now, other outlets have reported the same thing over the past couple of weeks. Their sources also say implementing features like the rumored curved OLED screen weren't ready for this year's model, Rumors also point to Touch ID being embedded into the screen and the removal of the physical home button in a future iPhone. Again, remember, Tim Cook said this in May. But we're going to give you things that you can't live without that you just don't know that you need today. Okay. Now, it has to be more than the removal of a headphone jack. It just has to be. Or maybe Tim just said this a year too early. All right, a new report from Mako Takara claims the iPhone 7 will ship with their standard 3.5 millimeter headphones, but will also include a 3.5 millimeter jack to lightning adapter to allow them to connect to the new device. A lot of rumors are being thrown around right now, but you know that adapter will get lost and you will end up buying another one. But it seems like the only way not to completely piss off users who still want to use their current wired headphones. Now, microblogging site Weibo has revealed the iPhone 7 might have dual SIM trays for use with multiple carriers after Rockfix shared photos of what they believe are components for the iPhone 7. This would allow your phone to send and receive calls and messages from multiple phone numbers. You could also potentially use multiple carriers based on network coverage or pricing. For example, you like Verizon's phone signal, but you prefer T-Mobile's cheaper LTE data plans. Or one line could be your main line, well, the other's for your side chick. Okay, okay, for saying that, I get a bad apple. All right, the Nikkei Asian Review reports Samsung and Sharp are ramping up their OLED production in anticipation of Apple's rumored 2017 iPhone. It's just another sign that really the 10th anniversary iPhone will be the one to get. Now, Apple has told suppliers it plans to launch an OLED iPhone with a partial release in 2017 after originally targeting 2018. Samsung has bumped up its OLED output 50% this year, and a separate report says Foxconn-owned Sharp also plans to ship OLED screens to Apple by the end of next year. It's also possible Apple may only launch the 5.5-inch phone with an OLED screen and may not expand OLED to the smaller 4.7-inch until 2018. It also looks like the MacBook Pro non-retina display with an optical drive is on its way out. It's been completely removed from the Apple Store floor displays, and you can only buy one, really, if you know that it exists. So you can bet we'll say our official goodbyes when the new MacBook Pros are released. And right now, I'd like to take a moment to talk about WatchOS Trace, or what Apple calls it, Watch OS 3. Boring. Now, I finally put it on this Apple Watch. That's right. You're wondering, am I wearing it? Yes, I am. And it's truly breathed new life into the device. It's streamlined the experience. It's so much more useful. And it's exceeded my expectations after watching the WWDC announcement. So if you own an Apple Watch, you're going to love the improvements. WatchOS makes that much of a difference. And if you haven't purchased one, just wait until the next gen Apple Watch. And really, everything Apple has done with this Apple Watch deserves a good Apple. Yeah! Plus this. It's 420. It's amazing. All right, let's get to the winners of our spec case giveaway. I asked you all how many times did I say rose gold in the intro and outro of our all new Apple Byte episode. And the correct answer was eight total, six in the intro and two in the outro. So congrats go out to email winners, Tim Sutton Brand and Naveed Nakvi, and on Twitter, Miss Joy Richard and Tori. Congrats y'all and we will be in touch. And before we go, I just wanted to say Congratulations to the Cleveland Cavaliers, their fans, and to all of Cleveland on your NBA championship. See, Nostra Tongas was right from the beginning. Hmm, oh, he's coming to me. Yes, yes, the Cleveland Cavaliers. Yes, the Cavaliers. <sighs> yeah, Nostra Tongas right every time. Uh-uh, Brian. Hey, what's up, Charlie? Wasn't there a little bit more to that clip that we're not seeing? No, I, I don't know what you're talking about. No, no, there wasn't. Hey, Mitch, 
There's more to that clip Wait. in there. Go ahead, roll them, Mitch. The Cleveland Cavaliers, yes, the Cavaliers, will once again lose to the Golden State Warriors. Okay, um, you're right. Nosha Tongas was wrong for the first time ever. Yeah, he was yeah, wrong, yeah. okay? Your Just leave buddy, it at that. Nosha Tongas was wrong, but you know what, Brian? You were wrong too. No. The time you dragged me in the studio made me pre record your video. I didn't do such a thing. I was never there. Well before the finals were I don't know what you're talking over. about. Brian, we did it, we recorded it, and Mitch has got it on tape. Roll them. <laughs> Warriors! Ultimate Warriors! <sighs> Cleveland! Cleveland! You did not pass the test! Before you, for it is the ultimate warriors. We've shown you what true champions. Cut the tape, guys. Stop. Stop it. All right. You made your point. Congrats. Hey, well, Brian, I just want you to remember the basketball gods are vindictive gods. Don't mess with them. All right. Whatever. And basketball gods. take this. All right, that's going to do it for this week's show. Thanks for watching the Apple Bite. Go Cavs.